Hey everybody, I'm Tommy Scoville. This is the Tommy Scoville Show. And it is Tuesday, people. And I can tell you right now that I'm not missing nicotine at all. And boy, would I be lying. <sighs> all right, so I got up this morning and there are certain times of the day where you do nicotine. It's just the way it is. So first thing in the morning, big. Uh, after every meal, big. So yesterday morning, I told you I got up and uh, I did push-ups to deal with that. I don't do push-ups two days in a row, so this morning I did crunches and abs. Um, and I got an endorphin um, rush out of it, or I got the feel-good chemical out of it. And within a couple of minutes, man, I was right back <laughs> to uh, just really wanting that, uh, that nicotine. So uh, I went for a walk outside, in spite of the fact that uh, it's really smoky out there, you know, half of the... This part of the country is on fire. That Dixie fire is really smoking up where I live. I went out and I did it anyway. Uh, it's hard. I just wanted you to know that uh, I'm struggling as well. You know what I mean? I, I told everybody I, I'm not perfect. I'm not, and I know I'm no guru, right? I just uh, am a guy that I've been through an awful lot. So uh, I'm having a hard time. I'm not going to use, I'm not going to use nicotine. I promise you I'm not. Uh, but just that you know, if you're out there right now and you're uh, you're doing the same thing and you're trying, I'm feeling it too, I promise you. And we're going to talk today about relapse. Before we do, a couple of things. Um, I love the fact that everybody has been giving uh, shout outs to, uh, to Andrew and to Tincture Bell. That's awesome, right? It's the dream of this channel, man. It really is, is that we're going to celebrate the victories. We got that coming just because society doesn't get it doesn't mean you don't deserve it. You understand? Please understand. That being said, it's back to school time. So this is the time that you get your kids ready. You put them in that first day of, uh, of school outfit, which is just awesome. You know, you take that picture and then you drive them to school. And a year ago, um, gentleman by the name of Henry, uh, that you'll see in the comments section, Henry's pet the farm. Um, Henry, you know, needed to get his daughter ready and take her to school and he couldn't because the night before he got so drunk that uh, the hangover made it so that he couldn't drive his, uh, his little girl to school. Wow, that's tough. And uh, I don't know that because I was there. I know that because he has stepped up to the plate and owned that. And boy, oh boy, number one, yeah, it's reprehensible. I mean, I've done far more reprehensible things, but to I'm saying that as a compliment, by the way. Right? It's reprehensible. And he owned it. That is amazing. To step out and say something like that for the world to hear is just awesome. Um, what makes it even better is, can you think of a better reason to quit drinking? Honestly, he couldn't. So he shares a, uh, a sobriety date with Tincture Bell. I didn't get to shout out for him yesterday, but we're going to do it today. And if you see Henry from Henry's Pepper Farm, please, people... Give this man a, uh, you know, a cyber high five and a pat on the back, not just for being sober, but for having the best reason ever, you know, to be sober. And I would imagine that uh, this year's back to school was so much cooler. But the dream's becoming a reality, people. They, it really is. You know, we're, we're supporting one another. And, you know, the goal is simple. It really is. We want to leave the earth a better place than we found it, and we want to put a dent in this damn war on drugs. And in yesterday's video, in talking about the war on drugs, I made a statement that I don't know that I uh, did a, a good enough job explaining. Um, and if I'm hypersensitive, I'll explain to you why. And I'll probably drop a follower or two. But um, in prison to remain safe, it is very popular for people to join gangs. Uh, it ensures that people have your back. And when you walk through the door, you're instantly segregated. They won't even let you sit at a table with another race. Yeah. Uh, the whites eat with the whites. The blacks eat with the blacks. The Mexicans eat with the Mexicans. And then within those little sections are subsections of um, particular gangs uh, or parts of the country. There are some prisons you go to which they refer to as your car. Uh, instead of a gang, they'll just say the uh, Nevada car sits over here or the Hawaii car, or whatever the case may be. And then you, everything is just so segregated in so many different ways. Um, and if you don't join a, a prison gang, especially in the feds, your life is gonna be a lot harder because nobody has your back. So when you fight, you fight alone. And 
I mean, the whites will back you to a point because you're white, but it's different when you're not what the term they use is tipped up. So I didn't join a prison gang and I didn't because um, I'm not going to hate someone on a, based on the color of their skin. Just not going to do it. Doesn't mean I, that there aren't black people I hate. <laughs> Doesn't mean there aren't Mexican people I hate. But uh, I hate people one at a time and I base it on who they are. And I'm getting better at not hating, period. I really am. It's something I'm striving for. But there are uh, there are people I'm never going to get over that. You know, uh, if you hurt a child, if you're in prison and you're a child molester, um, as bad as this is, and it's not Christian, and it's just it's just not a great thing to say out loud, but I loved watching those people get hurt. I really did. And that is what it is. But... Uh, the reason I'm bringing this up is when I was talking about the war on drugs, I made a comment about um, fighting the war on drugs from the supply side versus the demand side. Um, the supply side is quite simply trying to catch people who are bringing in the drugs. And I said that if you catch someone coming, coming across the border with drugs, enough uh, you know, to make enough money in a day to feed their family, depending on what they're carrying for a year, two years, you know, to give you perspective, if you go to Tijuana, which is right on the border, right? So this is probably the higher income that you're going to come across in parts of Mexico. But a police officer makes about $340 a month. So a person coming from further down south, the, the, uh, you know, the amount of money that someone can make in a day is going to create uh, a situation where they're always going to take that risk. And what I said was... The footprints will not be gone before someone else is putting their feet in the same footprints to carry drugs across. I don't know that I did a, a tremendous job in what I was trying to convey. What I'm trying to convey is this. The war on drugs is hurting people on both sides of the border. Our demand in this country causes people to do things to fill that demand they normally wouldn't do. If, if there was not... Uh, a demand for a train car full of heroin to be consumed daily in the U.S., then you wouldn't have people taking risks to get it across the border. Uh, but the last thing in the world I want to do is ever have someone think that um, I'm saying everybody coming across this border is bringing dope. The people who come to this country uh, come for opportunity. That's the truth. And if you took the number of people who cross the border and say what percentage of them are carrying dope, I'd be shocked if it equaled 1%. So I just want to make that uh, abundantly clear because um, I didn't cho join a prison gang, which meant fights, knife fights, all kinds of things, uh, because I refuse to, to live like a Nazi. It is what it is. Uh, I don't look down my nose at the guys that joined. You got to do what you got to do in there. You really do. But when I was at the SMU, the special management unit, there were two of us in the entire prison uh, white men who were not gang members. I got there and they said, we're putting you in with a guy and he wouldn't care. His name is Rick. He wouldn't care that I mentioned that. And they said, we're putting you in with old man Rick, who's about my age now. So didn't seem old. You know, anyway, uh, I said, hey, I don't get to choose who, who I live with. You're just going to normally you get a, a week or two in a cell alone until you can find somebody. He said, well, you're independent. You're not a gang member, correct? I said, yeah. Well, then we got to put you with someone who's not a gang member. I said, and that's my only choice. He said, in the entire prison. I made a stand for a long period of time based on not hating people by the color of their skin. And I don't want anyone to think that, uh, that I was making a disparaging comment about, you know, everyone coming across the border. That's simply not the case. Um, so hopefully that takes care of that. Uh, I feel better. So I think that takes care of that. Now we're going to talk about relapse people. The real thing that I want to hammer home today, and I know I don't want to go too long on this video. So, but the real thing I want to hammer, hammer home is this. If you're an alcoholic and you pick up the bottle and you start to drink, that's using again. That's not relapse. Relapse starts long before that. So what I'm going to encourage everybody to do is keep a real short leash on your brain. If you start doing things that are outside what you were doing to stay sober, if you start breaking good habits, and it may seem so small, I'm going to tell this story fast, but when I got out the last time I was married to a beautiful woman and I destroyed that marriage, that's on me. Uh, and when I relapsed, uh, I said to her, I'm going to a thrift store. I buy really expensive watches at thrift stores for almost nothing. People know Rolex. They know Audemars Piguet. They know the very expensive watch brands, but they don't know a lot of the, 
watches they've never heard of that sometimes can be worth 20, 30 grand and you can pick them up for $8. This happens for real. So I said, I'm going over there to look for watches. She said, great. I drove to the furthest thrift store that you could possibly get away from my house in the hood, not where you're going to be getting the best products dropped off. Um, I did that to get close to the hood. I didn't relapse that day. I mean, I didn't use that day, but I relapsed that day. The next time I went, same thing. And I said, man, I'm not going to stop over and see my friend. You know what I mean? What? I'm sober now. I got to treat this guy like crap. I'm strong enough. I went over. I even gave him 40 bucks so that he could get more dope because he said the dog guy was on the way to bring him a bag. I said, here, get four more. I had already relapsed. I had relapsed the previous week. I didn't use that day, but I came back the next time. And I can't remember, to be honest with you, if I relapsed on the, I mean, I used again on the third trip or if I used again on the fourth. But when I started to drive to that part of town, I was, I was on my way. Yesterday, I put a floor in at my mother's house. The only room left in the house that needed a floor, I put, I put a wood floor in there where it had linoleum in, the, uh, uh, in her laundry room. And I needed a saw blade. So I said, I'm going to go out and hit Home Depot. I'll be right back. Got in the car. I was driving to Home Depot. And I thought, I'm going to stop by 7-Eleven and get an energy drink. I don't know how it is where you live, but here in Nevada... You can buy any energy drink known to man at Home Depot. They got little refrigerators by the checkout. And I know that. I know they're there. But my brain was starting the process. The one thing they don't sell at Home Depot is vape products. But they sell at 7-Eleven, right? They wouldn't have one for the little canister device I had. I've already thrown that out. But for six bucks, right? I could have got a disposable. I may not have bought it then. But my brain was starting the process of, I can get you to do what I want. Um... And I started to, because I've read every book and because I know who, who I am and I know how far gone my brain is. And I promise you people, it's more far gone than all of you. It really is. I mean, I was such an addict and the addictive behavior of my brain is so over the top that I don't think that there's anyone out there, honestly, that is as bad off. So there's hope for everybody. Well, you know who might be as bad off? Our birthday boy. Yep. Thomas Elwood Bailey. Happy birthday today from everybody here. We love you. Uh, he's been down the same road. We we share an awful lot in common, you know. And you're going to hear a lot more about uh, Elwood in the upcoming uh, in the upcoming week or so. But uh, happy birthday, Elwood. He's as bad off as I am. So I didn't go to Home Depot because I evaluated why I was going to 7-Eleven, right? Uh, I'm not perfect, people, but I understand how bad my brain is. Trust me, I'm not perfect. I'm angry right now because of the nicotine thing. There's a guy in the Peppa community who has done some things that are probably not up to snuff. And people have been talking about it and I have stayed out of the fray because I don't want to feed that wolf. I did a video this morning. I didn't post it. But I did a video this morning that if you could see, you'd go, who is this guy? Um, I'm capable of being a very negative and, and, and rotten person. I'm not perfect. But I understand this process, especially as it applies to me. So I didn't go. I picked up my energy drink at Home Depot. Caffeine, taurine, taurine. I bought all of it, right? So, but do you understand the illustration and do you understand the point? You need to keep a very short leash. If on Monday morning you quit cigarettes or you quit whatever, evaluate and take a good hard look at why you're doing the things that you're doing. Do they make sense? Are you driving out of your way to go somewhere to hang out with somebody who smokes? Start thinking about the things that you're doing and question, especially in the beginning. The longer you go, the better off you are. Um, I can sit down tonight and have a conversation with a person who's on heroin using. I wouldn't have done that two years ago. I wouldn't have. Wouldn't have been in the same township if I could avoid it. I have enough sobriety under my belt. I'm not going back. I'm not. Uh, now, would I go to a party where they're using it? Not a chance in hell. Not a chance in hell. I'm not going to smell it burning ever again. Uh, but the more sobriety you get under your belt, um, the stronger you get. But the more you got to keep watch on the small minutia, the teeny things. If you got rid of all of your social media contacts because those are the people you used to party with. If you start working out every day because that replaced, you know, things that you were doing. If you went to church every Sunday because... God is playing a pivotal role in your in your recovery. Um, if you're reading at least one self-help book a month and you're going by channels that really focus on things that are positive, like this one, 
Uh, if you start ticking off all of those things, if you say, ah, you know what, I'm done going to church, and I promise you people, you'll come up with reasons, not just I, I'm, I'm going to stop. You know what? They changed the, uh, the worship format, and there's too much singing. Watch. Check yourself. Keep yourself in check, because by the time you pick this thing up, you relapsed so long ago, it's incredible. If you start feeling like you're sliding, tell someone. Say, you know what, I'm worried. I think... I don't think I'm as solid as I was. May sound silly, right? Saying it out loud will do massive things for your brain. It says, uh-uh, nope, 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 nope. I'm on to you. You may think that sounds ridiculous, but I promise you, saying it out loud is huge. Sharing it with people. Come to the comment section. There's almost always somebody here in the comment section. Come here. Just put a comment. I'm having a hard time. Watch what happens. People... This audience is the best of what social media has to offer. Read the comment section. There is so much knowledge being passed back and forth to people. Um, congratulations to Ting and to, uh, and to Andrew Eats and to uh, our gentleman Henry and Henry's Pepper Farms. So proud of the three of you and I'm proud of each and every person out there that's fighting the good fight. As I have told you in the beginning, um, the first guest I'm going to have on to talk about their, uh, their drug addiction is going to be Elwood. And we would like to hear Elwood's story, but I lied. It is his birthday, and I'm going to be having him on as the first scheduled guest that I intended to have on here. Uh, however, I have someone that is going to be coming on um, that I'm doing, and the reason I have to do it first is because it's in a live format. I'm not going to be doing it split screen. Uh, this individual and I are going to be sitting in the same room. And although uh, he's touched many times on the fact that he's not using, his story has really never been told. So I think it's uh, it's an opportunity that I got to jump on, and I think uh, everyone's probably going to be pretty excited about it. I'm having my big brother uh, on the show. He's um, coming out this Friday, and I seriously doubt we're going to do it the day he gets here, but um, we're probably going to film it over the course of the weekend, and I would say that there's a really good chance I will put it up on Monday, worst case scenario on Tuesday. But uh, the Johnny Scoville story, as it applies to... Um, you know, to his addiction. I would imagine people that's going to be a slightly longer show than normal, but all of you know Johnny Scoville. I would imagine that uh, you're probably going to be as excited to hear this story as anyone else. He has touched on it on Chase the Heat so many times, but Chase the Heat's not the same kind of channel that this is. And uh, there's going to be a unique opportunity for me to ask him questions and, um, and really draw out what I want um, him to tell you because his story is unique. I know it. And Johnny's story is unique in terms of an entire population, but it's not unique as in it's like no one else's. I've already heard people in the comment section that said things very similar. So I want people to understand that um, just hearing that, just hearing that somebody beat it is so much uh, an inspiration for people. So to hear Johnny's story about how he beat it and about what that has meant, I think is essential. And uh, Elwood will be next. I'm hoping to get Elwood in next week. Nothing better than asking somebody to play <laughs> on your video. No, I've talked to Elwood. Uh, so we're going to be putting something together. I'm hoping next week, worst case scenario, beginning of the following week, but I'm hoping to get him next week. Happy birthday, Elwood. Uh, and then just real quickly, almost everybody here is in the Pepper community. I have stayed out of the fray on some stuff that's going on. I'm not going to get negative here. I'm certainly not going to say this person's name, um, but... From a gentleman that's done an awful lot of tincture, a bottle at a time often, uh, there have been some things out there. You know what I'm talking about. If you don't, you don't need to. But if you know what I'm talking about, just leave it alone. Walk away from this person. Just leave it alone. This person's a fraud. Sad. You know, first time I saw this, uh, this person's show, I thought he was a fairly good guy. He's a fraud. And uh, pretending to be something you're not is dangerous. It's dangerous, and it says a lot about who you are as a person. As addicts, we pretend to be sober. We pretend to be better people. It's the basis and the backbone of every single thing that we are while using. We don't need to be near that or associate with that. If you know what I'm talking about, just walk away. Making videos talking about how the guy's a dirtbag or whatever, just walk away. Don't, don't put his name out there. Don't do any of that. Just walk away. Good advice across the board, people. If there's negative energy in your life, Cut that out like a cancer and fling it away, just like they do. They don't let cancer fester. When they find it, they cut it out. If you can't cut it out, you irradiate it, right? 
you bombard it with death, just walk away, right? Let's feed the positive wolf. I've said all I'm going to say about that. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you're blessed. If you do, just walk away. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in to the Tommy Scovo Show. It means the world to me that you people are here. I really am lucky that you're here. And you know what? You're lucky you are too. Not because of me, but because there's a group of people here that have your back, that support you, that care about you, and that are going to celebrate the fact that you're fighting the good fight. You know, got nothing to be ashamed of, people. Nothing, right? If I was doing this speech right now at a 12-step meeting, I would be Tommy, right? Because I'd want to be anonymous. I'm Tommy Scoville. I'm fighting the good fight. I love each and every one of you for doing the same thing. Thanks for tuning in. Same bat time, same bat channel tomorrow night. Uh, for those of you in the community, I will see you on Tincture Tuesday this evening. And uh, hey, as my friend Charlie Mullins would say, tell someone you love them today. It wouldn't bother me if that person was one of the three people that I just mentioned. You know, they've earned it. God bless each and every one of you. See you tomorrow night. And again, who am I? What show is this?